and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this drawing of oranges wrapped by artist John Frederick Pato. He painted it in 1857, but this is my version and it is not in color like the oranges that he painted are in color. Um, and all we're going to need is a Micron pen, 05, a black Sharpie marker, a white gel pen, 10, and gray paper. You want gray paper so you can see the difference between the white and the gray paper. This is gonna be really fun, so let's get started. We have here a black and white copy of Oranges Wrapped by John Frederick Peto from 1854. So normally this is in color, but because we're gonna use our gray paper and our white pen and our black pen, um, I've made the copy to be in black and white. And I don't have oranges, but I do have some mandarins. And so I brought them in so that we could analyze the way the stem is shaped here and here, and the different little puckers that are occurring in the oranges. Um, so. Um, they're a cousin, so they're closely related, and we have the similar shape on that. So we just have those little bits of details to help us as we're drawing these parts. So now, here's my paper. It is an 8 by 10 piece of paper, and I've marked it all the way to the corners because I have it taped to another paper. And I have marked the midpoints, so 5 inches on the 10 inch side, 4 inches on the 8 inch side. And this will help us get started. Now you, you don't need any special pencil. I just pulled this one off my desk. So it's a pencil and have an eraser, any kind will do, because we're gonna put a gentle sketch on here uh, so that we can do our pen and ink on top of our gentle sketch and erase it away. The next thing I'm gonna do is fold my reference in half and open it and fold it in half the other direction and mark the midpoints on the copy of where I have folded it. This is gonna help us with proportions and keeping things together. All right, now the other thing that you're gonna notice is that the image itself is wider than it is tall. It's a short picture, wide picture, and that means that we're gonna have a little bit more black background on ours. So it won't be so tight to this folded paper bit here that's wrapping the orange at the top. Um, so it does, it's not 100% proportional. It should work out though for us. Um, so that, that'll be helpful to you to understand that. The other thing this paper is useful for, it is useful as a straight edge. So I'm just gonna fold it. And I know it's hard to look at it and fold at the same time, but there's a table down here. And so I'm gonna fold it so that I can use this paper to position the tabletop. So I'm gonna go, remember we have a little bit more room, so this will be like the dark under the table line, dark under the table. So that will be there. Here, this is the thickness of the table itself. From here going back to there is the distance of the surface of the table which we can't accurately measure because of foreshortening. So this could be a long table, it, we don't know. It's just the angle that it is, is kind of right on the fruit on the edge of the table. So that'll just get lost in the shadowiness there. Uh, but I do wanna try to get this to be similar. So we've got this line here, here, and this will be all dark below here. So from here down will be dark. Okay, um, then we have this front edge, so we want to find the top. So it looks about an inch, about an inch above, maybe not quite. So I'm going to put a line here for that thickness of the table. So um, it was just nice to get to use the paper as a straight edge to get that in space. And you can see that all the fruit is going to set right on top of that edge of the table. All right, I can also use this to help me with a helping line. So I'm gonna connect 
my four to four, I'm gonna use almost no pressure because I really wanna be able to erase that later. Um, so see, you can barely even see it on the tape, but you know it exists. And then we're gonna do that going in the other direction as well, so up and down, just to help us get our oranges in the space together in about the same location. So there we have it. And I didn't even have to go below the table with that because yeah, we're not even gonna draw anything more down there. So that can just be gone. So there, I could have just stopped there. And if you draw it, you can just stop there too. Now we're gonna find where the fruit touches the table. So I mentioned that it's right here on the edge. So there's gonna be a slight gap between this line and where this slice starts. And then because it's sitting there, it's not too curvy. It's got a little bit of a flatness to it to keep it on the table. So it's going to draw a line about there for where that orange slice is. Oh, maybe a little more to the left there so that we can see other stuff to the right where it raises up. That, all right, so that'll be about there. And that's the orange slice. Uh, but the orange paper will also be about there as well. So we'll add to that in a bit. Then here's my midline, and then there's a gap, and then this is where this orange is very near to the edge of the table too. So right there. So that will help us get where they're firmly planted on the table, we're not flying around everywhere. And then it's kind of fun because this folded up paper right here is gonna start whoop, right next to the edge of our paper. So this is this line right there okay and when we look at this side it's going to be in a bit so i'm just going to put a gentle little mark there because i'll probably have to adjust it so it's not perfect just yet um, and so now i can pencil in my little orange slice so here we go little orange slice little orange slice we have the rind we have that white stuff which I heard has good vitamin K in it, um, which is useful when you need your blood to clot, evidently. So something new about nutrition that we just learned, our little orange slice. So something like that. We'll add more details later. All right, so then we can go out and up. See, I did have that slightly wrong right there. Right there. All right, that seems good enough. And it looks like some stuff's happening with our paper over here. So this line will continue for some paper. And it looks like instead of them each individually being wrapped with paper, that maybe some of this paper has overlapped each other. So that's kind of interesting. So it's going to go over and up to about there. So that this will go up like this. And this one has a bit of a twist like that. And even a little wrinkle there and there. This one is going to go around and up. And this one's going to come all the way Pass. So this is a little overlapping of the white paper of the orange on the left, getting involved in the paper of the orange on the right. So here's where it goes this way and that way. A little bit of a lightning bolt kind of shape. All right, so this is a folded edge of the paper. It's going to go up, 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 up. And this one's going to come down so that this goes behind. And there's a bit more paper. I like this. This is kind of like doing drapery, only it's paper instead of fabric. Uh, but it's kind of a fun thing that you get to do in art school where they, they set out drapery or fabric over stuff and then your job is to copy it and make it look realistic. Um, and it's a fun exercise. So I like revisiting similar things. So this goes up and up to there. 
And then this has a bit of a fold here and there. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like an orange yet, so don't worry. It will. It will. All right, let's go all the way over to here to get these little bends and folds on this. So you really want to pay attention to the lights and the darks of this because that kind of shows you inside and outside of this paper because the edges will be where the light hits and then the darkness is the inside of the paper where the light can't reach and that shows the folds and here we go up and this gets overlapped there and we'll come back to that side but I think we got good base on that side. Okay, I want to focus in the middle again. Um, so we have, we've got this part, so it kind of makes like a kite shape a little bit on that line. And that will help us with this side of the orange on the right. How it comes up, it comes past the midline, and then the paper will hit, head all the way up over and join with this and it does have a round shape but it kind of comes at a little peak over here so that the paper can fold like a like a cabbage leaf see how that comes around it like a cabbage leaf uh, just kind of wrapped around there <laughs> I love that these oranges are wrapped in white paper it kind of reminds me of like Vermeer's women in their uh, white hats and capes and such only this is an orange, so I, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. Okay, so then we're going to try to get the, the smooth roundness of the orange. This is the only part that we can really see sticking out. And so now I have to move this back a little bit because I can see I got too forward there with that line because I want to be able to see the orange peeking out up here. All right, and then uh, much better. So I'm going to get that line cleaned up so you can see it like that. All right, so there's another glowy edge here. Um, yep, this is in place. This is in place. Uh, this line has to go right here. When I repaired that, I didn't get rid of that line. So let's get that out. And there's a foldy edge right there. Um, we're going to come back later with a little shadowing, and that's going to happen around this triangle here. So I'll just put some little dashed lines there, but I'll probably erase them later. So now we get to bring our little orange model here uh, so that you can see what's going on with the stem. So the stem is near to the top here, and that's the topmost part. There's the stem part. And then we have the cute little flowery part that's around it. So see what I mean? Let's see. See how it kind of looks like a little green flower around it? Sometimes this one's got broken off. If you can see that. So that's why there's that scalloped edge there is from that. And then we have the little star ridges from the orange itself uh, that we can see with these little depths, the little puckers. So it kind of makes a star shape. So we have that in place on there. All right. So that's all we really need for that orange. Yes, all right, so let's move back. Oh, and there is a shadow line from our orange. And then this is the light from behind the orange. So it looks like I just drew the shadow in the wrong place. But that's the light going past it that we see in our reference that's behind the oranges. So that's good. And then we'll have a shadow line here as well. Okay, orange number one is done. Well, technically, I guess that's orange number two. We just did it first. Okay, so let's come back to this guy over here with its cute little Pebbles Flintstone hairstyle paper. Um, and this will be a fun one to do too. So. We know, back to the center, we know that its little thing, it's facing us, and its little stem area is going to be about here. So we've got the middle part of the stem, the round part of the stem, 
And remember, these are oranges, this is mandarin, so this guy's smaller. Um, so there's a little bit of a size difference. And it's got this little flower edge around it that looks like if we were gonna draw cute little flowers today, but these, this would have been green. Um, so there's definitely some spaces around there. And then he's got his little grooves around. Let's see how it relates to the petals. Yep, kind of like that. Little pucker going that way. Got a pucker coming down there and over there. Okay, not as bold of one here, but you know, a little something. And so something like that. Also, the painting is cracking a bit, so that's not exactly the texture of an orange there. That's just like the cracking, because, you know, this painting was done in 1854. So all in all, we're lucky we have it. All right, and so now we know that this is a little straight here and that the wrapping will start there. We're also going to find this bottom one comes back up to the curve for the edge of what is peeking through. It's a peekaboo orange, okay? And then this line is gonna go up to there and then around these to there so that you get that definite peekaboo feeling because not a lot of the orange is sticking out and more of it is wrapped in the paper. So we've got, that's, you know, maybe half of the orange is showing on this side only. All right, so we're gonna have this little swoop come up here from there. And then we have a little letter Y kind of thing happening here and a little space there. And so this will follow it back, follow it, follow it, follow it for the light edge all the way down into here. And then it's gonna come back up all the way to here to do this little top area there um, because we're gonna add the highlight side of that next. But first, let's get another little wrinkle in our paper to go behind here. And so there, got a shadow there and a line there. All right, and then there's another line. Whoop. Okay, we gotta do the highlighty side. All right, so we're going back down here. We're gonna go up and follow this up. Like this. And up to there. Okay. Then we have a side that goes down to here. So it'll be like to there, and it'll start here. All right, so a lot going on there, so. The last line we drew was this one here, okay? Um, all right, so, so this is like our Y, kind of looks like one of those flossers. Yeah, and then, so it makes like that shape. Okay, so we're ready to locate this curve that comes around and becomes other things. So about here, oh look, we forgot a line here, which is important because this creates this thickness that goes apart from this and over there to create this kind of twisted open area where the paper is folded on itself. And there we have that, okay. And then we have our little part that goes under and now it's time for the Pebbles Flintstone ponytail here. Boop, 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 boop. All right, twisted paper. And here, and there's a little torn edge, which is kind of fun because we didn't really see the paperiness without the torn edge. Um, so we got that. We got this internal space that's bright there. This looks like it has even more of a twist or a fold like that, so I'm gonna put that in there. 
and there, there. All right, that'll be good enough. All right, so then more is going to be happening over here. I think I'm going to have to add like a little division here. So um, good thing I just have a normal pencil eraser here because I think I need this to be that way and this to be that way so that they're side by side kind of like these dimples, but only in the paper where they get twisted up. So we don't get lost of where we're headed. And then this will go this way. This will go that way too. And then we're gonna come down and join there. Whew, that was kind of complicated. All right, so looking at it, I'm pretty pleased with what I have. I do think I'm gonna move this part over just a bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit more that way with that line and erase here. So it kind of fills out that orange shape there. Um, and I think I am going to move this one over just a little bit here too. Just feeling the need for a more voluptuous orange down that side. All right, you can um, think what you want about that. It is art, so it's okay. All right, and yeah, that's enough. Let's erase our helping lines and get our black pins out. Well, I'm almost done with my lines. There's just a few things I noticed. First, I noticed that we need the line for where we lose sight of the table in the darkness there. And that we need a little line betw between the edge and for that white stuff in our orange there. And that it gets a bit thicker in this middle area, slightly thicker there. Uh, so I'll just do that to create that shape. Um, also, um, I erased a little bit of this and I made this a little bit more uniform, um, kind of like that, because it was a little off from our reference. All right, so um, I hope that you did the blackberries with me last month because those were super fun and it's a similar style. Uh, so because of that, we will not be just tracing everything so far. Instead, let's start with tracing the outside line here and get our Sharpie marker out because we're just going to color this whole background from here up with black for our Sharpie marker. So first, I'm just going to line it off so that I know where I'm not coloring with Sharpie. And see, I will just take the outside edge called the contour whenever you're doing something. The outside edge is the contour. Now, the reason we're not just going to trace everything is because some things won't be a solid line. Sometimes it'll be a loose line. Sometimes it will just be sketchy. Uh, but the we know for sure that it will be solid next to this background. Well, we think we know for sure anyway. Um, I might find out differently when I get there. Like I changed that shape slightly and then I'm going to get that little feathery bit from the torn paper. And actually, I think I need some torn paper over here. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to come put some little torn paper on this edge too. There we go. Because I might forget by the time I get over there if I don't go ahead and do it. So let's work our way around the contour of the shape and then we can color it with our fine point Sharpie, which you'll be glad because can you imagine using this to color all of that? Whew, that'll be exhausting. And the reason we're doing that first is because it'll be nice to have that dark, dark background right there so that when we add darkness to our art, it doesn't look as scary. It looks more normalized. Uh, whereas if we just started coloring something dark right now, you might be scared that you're making a mistake. It feels so dark and so final that you'd be like, this can't be right. But alas, it is. All right. Sharpie marker time. As you're coloring, make sure that you have something behind it because this ink is very liable to go right through and get on your cool table. So make sure that you have something back there. And the goal is to have a solid black background where 
no gray paper shows. So you see, it's easier to kind of color away from it. And I might come back with this one to get precision close so that I don't accidentally go in to my shapes for my oranges. So do the big stuff out here and I'll come back with the precision pin to get close in. Ah, oh, nothing like the smell of Sharpie in the afternoon. Okay, so the next place that I noticed is we have the highlight behind, but I miss this line that starts here and goes next to the table over there for the bold shadow. So we have our shadow here. Now we have our shadow here. And there is a shadow over there, but we'll get that later. So first, let's outline it, and then you can decide which is easier for you, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows. No, whether it is easier to use your Sharpie marker or your Micron pen to color those places in. So let's do that. And finally, while we're making things very dark, I think you remember I mentioned before that under the table is dark. So from this line down, we will also color in with our Sharpie marker. And I think I trust myself to trace the line and color below it with the Sharpie marker. Because see, I will pull from my shoulder and then color inside. Also, if you notice that there are patches that are blacker than others, just change up the direction as you go, kind of like cross hatching, but coloring entirely, and you will be able to get that really dark black areas by changing the direction and doing some repetitive coloring, but it will be worth it. And we can still be so thankful we don't have to color black backgrounds with this. All right, so those are all the places that I used my Sharpie marker. So I'm gonna put that away because I don't think I need it anymore. I've double checked. I found some really dark places in here and over there. Got those. Now, thinking about how to approach with our Micron pin, um, we're going to trace almost everything. The parts we're not gonna trace are the little wrinkles on the orange. So this part, don't trace those thingies, okay? And this dashed line that I made right there, don't trace that. But apart from that, I think we're safe to trace just about everything. So let's do that. So we're going to get our pin out and we will make these lines show up very delightfully. And you're just going to trace them all with authority. And so you don't have to worry about having a sketchy line at this point. Um, if I left a gap, like when I did this and this, also leave a gap when you trace, okay? So let's copy that sort of idea of not having lines that are always connected and have fun. Put on some music, sing a song, I don't know, daydream. But at the same time, get all these lines and then we'll have a great groundwork laid to do the rest of the drawing. It will be so fun. Here it is all traced and erased. And because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start up here at the top and we're gonna start our shadows in this area. All right, so we already have some of the torn edges. I'm just gonna make them a little bit deeper so you can set them apart from the background. And then there's a darkness here. And then there's gonna be just a little cross hatching here for the gray area there. Uh, looks like I diminished the size of this quite a lot. Um, oh well, so I'm going to put some shadows there and a little bit here in the front of this. There will be shadow lines coming this way. 
see, kind of like little cross hatches lines. Um, and then in this whole space here, we're going to put some shadows too. So I'm just using parallel lines to create the darkness there and parallel lines along this edge as well so that we have a dark edge to this folded paper there. Cool, that looks great. Okay, we have this line, which is probably thin enough to create a little edge, but I'm just gonna put some lines in there like that, just there. And above this line, I'm gonna get a bit thicker like that to show that that is the shadow side of things. Here, I'm going to put the shadow side just like that. And in this loop though, the shadow side will be up here and then over here. So it shows like a depth there, like there's a space inside. All right, when I come down this side, a little farther apart and a little more gently, we have this shadow edge. So it kind of balloons out like a little house on the prairie um, hat that they wear to bed. So a little night hat kind of balloons out there. So it's full and vol volum voluminous. I don't know. It uses volume and it's large, but I can't say it. Voluminous? No, that's not it. All right, you guys can all work on that and get back to me at our next meetup on how to pronounce it. All right, this edge is wrapped and folded, almost twisted. So we're gonna put a shadow edge here. And then it casts a shadow inside on this part. So it's kind of like using a pencil. It feels like, oh, it must be out of ink. No, I'm just pressing really lightly because I want to have that look of a shadow. I don't want a solid line drawn there. But it looks like I will have to go back and retrace this line to divide that edge from that shadow. See how I did that? So we wouldn't lose that part. And the shadow will go right across there and then this will be darker going here. All right, then there's a letter V shaped shadow here. We'll make that darker there. And then there's a little edge to this folded fabric or paper. I'm guessing this is paper. Um, looks like white tissue paper that's wrapped these oranges, which is pretty fun. Okay. Then we have a shadow in this triangle like this. Close together parallel lines. And like that to that line. Then we also have, here we have, oh, there's a little divot. So the shadow goes inside that little divot like that. And so all of this part, so near to the orange will be darker shadow where that is just kind of touching the orange as it wraps around. And then out here is lighter, so Side to side, sketching, sketching, sketching. Just like that. And that creates a shadow on the side of that orange. All right, so we didn't trace these bits because they're gonna be more colored than traced. So we're just gonna go in between these guys a little shadowing like that for there. And then we're gonna shadow down in there. And we have shadowy there, shadowy inside, a little bit like, like that there. Kind of close to this green thing is darker because it sets down in a little valley and then we have the shadow cast by it here and then we're going to follow this line like that this one 
is going to be on this side of things. So I think it's a little lighter out. Darker right there. And we've got a cast shadow onto this divot going this way. It's a little scribbly, but it makes for a good dimple on that orange. And then over here, kind of where this comes in, put a little tornado there for its little dimple. And then I am going to put a few little dots. It's not a strawberry, but you know, for some of those pores to designate the orange skin separate. And then I'm going to do some more shadowing over here. So that curve. Okay, there. That looks very orange-esque and a little bit more there. And maybe I'll just add a little kind of divot there. Okay, very fun. This is going to be quite light, so we don't have to do any more on this side. But this side is more in the dark, so I'm going to get more right next to this line, kind of going in this direction. And then it will fill this space here. And then it will be lighter. It's going that way. Okay, then we're back here. More of the shadow, so this one's pretty dark here. Coloring, coloring the shadow, darker there and then lighter here and then it will angle this way and be darker down into that triangle like that okay so create that edge there i'm just doing a little repeti repetition near to the lightest parts is the darkest parts all right and then this part is quite dark down in here too, with lines side by side. They'll be reflected light over there, so it won't be as dark on that far edge that's next to the darkness. But it's not going to just stop suddenly, so we... It's not like one of those, but it's just reflected over there. So we'll do more repetitive marks on this side, so it's darker away from it. Okay, cool. All right, we have this darkness here. This is quite bright, but part of it is in shadow there, like that. Then it's very bright. Then we have shadow there. And then we already got that is quite dark down there. Okay. Then I think I added this line. Um, so if you don't remember it, that's why. Just add it in real quick, because then the shadow happens in this direction up until we get to it okay and then this is also shadowy going this way so it follows the curve of that orange like that okay this is very bright here so we won't color anything there but we will shadow this up and we kind of change the direction of the shadow and we're going to make this line darker now so that stands out in front and this will be shadowy and this is bright but this will be shadowy going this way to get to there uh, this is gently shadowy so not as dark as this part all right, now, little orange bits. So we're gonna see. Right, so it's kind of like loop de loos so that you can kind of tell that there would be little partitions for the pulp of the orange behind that little veil. And then this part is this the peel on how it's separate there and then this part of our peel we might have to add a little to it is in the shadow so 
that's the outside part. The rind, the zest is over here. Okay. All right. So we got that. Yeah, we're moving right along. I'm going to add a little bit more darkness to the bottom of this stem area here because uh, it is in shadow and I'm going to re-outline some of those lines so it's bolder and give it a little more depth so that this part's higher, this part's lower. All right, that looks pretty good. And yep. All right. Now we're ready for this orange. I had already kind of started on it, but now I'm going to come back and put some shadow in there. So that's a bit darker because that's the part that's closest to our orange. But then this is a lighter shadow in there because it's white paper, so the light can go through it. And that creates a shadow that's not as high contrast. So we got that. Ah, all right, so we're ready to get our little dimples over here on this one. And then it'll be kind of shadowy going down inside the paper over here. So it's fun to use this pen because it's almost like using a pencil that's a pen. So because if you adjust your pressure, you can get lighter shadows. And scribbling works pretty nicely to get kind of shape and form. Cross hatching definitely. And we got a little in the colors where it's a little shadowier. Those will show up better. Okay, very fun. All right, so I'm gonna come back down to the bottom side because uh, we have a shadow from this overhanging paper. It gets quite dark right here. So that's why I'm going to use more cross hatching to get that in place. Which is always nice when things are kind of dark around the bottom because it serves as a foundation so that it is firmly sitting upon the table and not looking like it's about ready to fly off. So um, it's always helpful to have good dark bases. Stability in the image. Okay, so that's under there. Then we end up with a little bit of shadows that almost look like lines following this part. Oh, I missed a line when I traced. There, we got it now. Not a problem. Okay, so it's much darker here. Little reflected light on the very edge of it. All right, and this part is also dark in there. This part is quite dark there. Gentle there. Darker on this side. That's on that side. You thought I was going to color that triangle in. I thought I was too for a second, but then I noticed it's the edges around it that's dark not the triangle itself and we've got a ridge of darkness right in the middle of that we already have that in place all right let's come back over to this paper shadows coming under here and then it gets thin all right and then this is where we have our zigzag because this all side over here is quite dark, so I'm going to cross hatch it in. So I change my direction. My pencil pen at work. And it comes about to there. A 
little scribbles to show that there's dimples in the paper from where it maybe has been bent a few times. Um, kind of that tissue paper feel to me. Okay, then we get to do the swirling twisted paper around this up here. So that means the shadow side is on the flat side here. And right in there. Here, and then there's some little dark divot there. All right, that looks really cool. Okay, I'm excited about that. All right, let's go back in here because there's definitely some dark bits in between this um little green area that is in of course green on ours uh, but it's a little lighter than the other one for this angle so it's almost like building a spider web a little bit because it's got that radial symmetry all right, shading the oranges is um, one of those things that's really hard to tell when you're done or not. So I think I'm done shading my oranges. I had a lot of fun. I'm just going to add kind of a little mark here because there's some darkness there. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, so here it is right in there. So I'm just going to kind of darken that slightly. Maybe it's a shadow from that paper. And then we're going to talk about the table. So here's the table. All right, the highlight edge is at the corner where it goes off. And I'm going to find it easier to turn my paper this way to do the table uh, because I need up and down marks, which are easier to make from this angle here. Notice it's very pale and almost non-existent. All right, but here, from here over, it's gonna be a bit darker, so I'm gonna add it more like that. Now, if I had a really good shoulder, I could do this, um, but I don't know. It's not as even as my hand, so you guys decide. It is wood grain, so it's probably fine on this part to do it this way. I'm not gonna risk Risk it on this part though, because this part can be darker. At the tabletop, I need a little bit more precision, so I will. I will do it both ways, basically. So I'm going to get those long lines in, and then I'm going to go back to my little parts to get that across, because. think it works. You'll let me know in a minute. You'll be like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. Um, and this is just where my level of patience doesn't come in. It does, I don't have that enough patience to sit there and do line after line after line. Now you might and you're welcome to try. Get about four lines in, and then I just want to do that. Yeah. That's just me. That's where individual differences come in. So I think I'll be fine with the front of my table at this level of darkness. I don't mind repetition as much as monotony, which are similar yet different. So I'm continuously drawing on the same area, but I'm using a variety of strokes. Now, here on the table, like this, I need for it to be more even. And then stop before I get to the edge for that glowy edge. So this one, and lighter pressure, right? So I can get that 
light it and that will also happen and the light behind the fruit and here on the edge in front of the fruit. Alright, so let's take a look at how that looks. Ah, pretty good. I can see more of my overlapping lines here. So I just kind of keep music for the front of my table. I think I'm good with that. Yes, I am. And now we have all the shadowy bits. Let's get our number 10 Jelly Roll white pen out and we will start on our highlights. Highlight time, highlight time, highlight time is here. All right. So remember, this is a paint pen, so oftentimes it gets a little dried on the end, and I usually use tapping to get it to show up again, and that makes me very happy because then it does. So I'm going to come up here and put some white highlights. Remember, our paper is gray, and so I'm going to put these white bits on. That is the very brightest places. And since this is white paper, I'm kind of cross-hatching with white in some places to get that nice brightness of this white wrapped orange. So cross hatching can be any color. Right, so we're gonna get some white here and here and here. The little lines of white there. Dots of white. Definitely right there. There's some definite glowy bits there. And then we have our white part of our orange. Right in there. Oh, and we just talked about how the edge of the table is white. So I'm just going to go right on the edge. I feel it wet on my hand, so I got to be careful I don't smear it while I've already colored it. But I can do that white edge all the way across. And I'm not pressing with all my might because then it might get shy and decides it doesn't want to come out. Um, all right, so then we have this white edge right here. And whatever this is, the light is really hitting boldly on that part. So I'm going to get that part nice and white. And some white right there. Oh, and I know this is so fun. This is why I chose this one, so I could play with the white pen. There, and a little bit there, and a lot right there, and a little bit right up there, and right there, and some right there. All right, now this whole side of this one, nice and in the light right there just very delightful and I'm still using lines though so instead of coloring it solidly like we did with our sharpie um, I'm just using a lot of kind of over overlaying some lines which makes it really pop and feel more like a line drawing okay got some right there which it is it is a line drawing it's not a painting I got a little bit on this side and that side there there some little bits of white dots on this side of our orange reflective on the pores okay we got right here and here and here and here a lot right there and just a little thin and a little line of dots And over here, and right there, there and there. Mm, not so much here, maybe a little bit right there. But this part is very bold and white coming up to this side. It's right in the light, and this part is in the light too. And out to there. 
and this part is in the light, and this part is in the light. And this top ridge. And there's a line up there. All right, that looks pretty good. Do I have any more spots? Hmm. Maybe a little bit right there. Okay. I can do a few little lines for the pulp. Kind of up and down lines in there to show the pulp and the orange and a few dots right there for the edge of the orange. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this one a little bit brighter here. Yeah, and I'm gonna sign it. The white pen there. Yeah. Ta-da! That looks great. That was really fun to make with you. All right, I'll see you at a meetup.